I can handle his punches. He's just too fast. Was that basically the story of the fight? Yeah, he was, he was too fast. It was too fast. Welcome back to another presentation of The Sweet Science here on Boxing Legends TV. I'm going to knock him out. That's all it is to it, and that's the bottom line. On today's video, we attempt to tackle an age-old question. What primary offensive trait is the most effective at the very highest levels of the sport? Now tap your lance. I refuse to go down, I refuse to lose, and whatever he hit me with, it was not going to hurt me. Does possessing swift footwork and blistering hand speed trump maintaining one-punch knockout power? Or does having the ability to finish a fight with a single shot negate any argument between the two? Definitely. When I went back in, the, in, in my corner, I knew he was right there for the shot. I just had to set it up. To find out, we've handpicked 25 of the greatest encounters between the most competent speedsters and knockout artists throughout the sport's rich history. Watch the clock now, Tim. Tommy has nothing left. Pitching for Team Speed, we have the renowned Sugar Ray Leonard, Floyd Mayweather Jr., Willie Pep, and Muhammad Ali, among many other ever-fleeting talents. <laughs> You out, sucker. <laughs> Batting for Team Power, none have quite turned out the lights as brutally as Big George Foreman, Tommy the Hitman Hearns, Julian Jackson, and other famed stars such as the fan favorite, Iron Mike Tyson. I didn't challenge me with their somewhat prim primitive skills. They're just as good as dead. From the overwhelming response to our most recent video, we know how much everyone appreciated the upscaled and enhanced fight footage. So today, all 25 fights will be at the highest quality grade that digital age has ever seen. Using advanced coding and AI technology to bring the life back the highly compressed and distorted pieces of media. We'll keep track of the scores as the fights continue. Who do you think will come out on top? Vote in the poll above. Without any further ado, BLTV presents When Speed Meets Power in Boxing. Prediction? Yes, prediction. Pain. First up, we have the second encounter between the multi-weight super champions, Thomas the Hitman Hearns and Sugar Ray Leonard. Leonard in the strike, red and white trunks. Right hand scored by Leonard. And Hearns says, yeah, you got me. Well, he may be aiming for a big right hand. Whirring, here at Caesar Talent. Overhand right hand. There was certainly no love lost as both men engaged in a brutal slugfest early on, but Leonard led the charge as Hearns' withering resilience was tested. Hearns got a substantial second wind and started landing crushing combinations, which eventually led to the fight's only genuine knockdown in the 12th, with precise punches from Hearns leaving Leonard no option but to kiss the canvas. Although many fans felt Hearns' late surge was enough to get the decision, the judges felt otherwise and scored the fight a draw. I can't, um... I with the judges. I'm, I'm proud to have a draw instead of a loss of a record. Leonard won the first fight, so the score is currently 2-1 to one to Team Speed. Britain's own Amir Khan looked to overcome the odds as he moved through the weights to challenge the WBC champion Saul Canelo Alvarez. Hard right hand by Khan. Bigger guy know that they're in there with a real fighter. <laughs> So far, I think Khan's trainer, Virgil Hunter, is going to like this first round. Khan's fast hands had all of Canelo's fans, including his family at ringside, terrified as the Brit backed him up with sporadic bursts of lightning combinations. Virgil yells, point, point. <laughs> he remains a... oh, right hand. While the crowd panicked, Canelo remained calm, softening Khan up with the odd power punch just to let him know any mistake would be met by his iron fist. Bye. As well as taking away his energy and every goal. And Kenny Bayless is stopping the fight. In all honesty, the finishing shot was inevitable. The 2016 Ring Magazine KO of the Year. Like I said from the beginning, you know, he's a fast fighter, he's very fast, and I knew that things were going to be complicated at the beginning. September 10, 1993, Mexican legend Julio Cesar Chavez put his unrivaled 87-0 record on the line against his most problematic opponent to date, the defensive wizard Sweet Pea for Nell Whitaker. Here we go! Again, remember, we have judges from foreign countries. Oh, good action. Waiting on a break because it's now happening that Whitaker's doing. Pernell Whitaker mixing it up. Purnell took the crowd by surprise as he opted to fight Chavez at his own game, up close and personal. And when you tie in his unparalleled ability to evade punches at any distance, Chavez fans quickly realized that this wasn't going to be another routine victory. 
solid balance. I'll tell you. Oh, Whitaker landing to the head of Chavez. The pressure from Chavez was prevalent throughout, yet for much of the time, he was punching fresh air and being met by four or five shots in return. Decision is a majority decision a draw. Even Chavez's home crowd booed the decision. In no way did the Mexican win more than two or three rounds. Anthony Joshua looked to improve his record to 23 and 0 when he faced the plump but deceptively quick Andy Ruiz Jr. in 2019. Right hand from Joshua, good amateur, excellent throw, but he's oh. really trying to go for it, Ruiz, and he got caught there. Yep, right hand. Oh, Another shot from Joshua. He's just standing in front of Joshua. Oh, 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 oh big shot. Beautiful punch from Anthony Joshua. Ruiz was out cold before he hit the ground, and with his arm awkwardly breaking his fall, it appeared to be all over. Yet, in one of the most remarkable turn of events, he did more than just make it back to his feet. And he's going for it. Oh, oh, he's got a Ruiz catches Joshua. He's Joshua tried to shake off the onslaught, but in all truth, he never recovered from the first temple shot that Ruiz landed. Joshua got his revenge six months later, cruising to a unanimous decision. After a disappointing run of results, the former three-weight world champion Super Zab Judo was given a career lifeline as he faced the highly ranked and dangerous Lucas Patisse. Get past the four round if they don't start fighting a little more. Like that. Body shot by Matisse. Zab Judo landed a left straight down the middle. Armando Santa Cruz. Matisse push. So far. Zab wanted to impress his dissolving HBO fan base, and he put on a clinic for eight to nine rounds before the young knockout merchant marked his territory. On, you know, in terms of talent, it's a mismatch. Oh, oh, Hard right hand by Matisse. Zab Tuna goes down. Matisse finished strong, but Zab's work early on had already secured the victory. I have a lot of respect for him. A lot of respect for his punch of power. He came in there with a perfect record, 25 knockouts. And yeah, he's a very strong fighter. He got strong hands, heavy handed. Long past his best, but that never stopped Muhammad Ali from taking on the most dangerous challenges the boxing world had to offer. In this case, Ernie Shavers, the man who is often cited as the hardest puncher in boxing history. It always baffled me how Ali approached this fight. His confidence was bewildering. Ali was taunting the crowd between rounds, exaggerating his opponent's damage while simultaneously racking up the large majority of rounds. Shavers did land some heavy shots, but nothing Ali's granite chin hadn't dealt with a thousand times in the past. Boxing's most celebrated showman, Hector Macho Camacho, defended his WBC lightweight title against Edwin Rosario at Madison Square Garden in 1986. And a five-punch combination for a good left hook. There's the left hook, very good exchange. The opening four rounds optimized the very subject matter of this video, with the blazing speed of Camacho matched only by the omnipotence that Rosario brought to every fight. There's the Paris vision. A left hand and Camacho's hurt! Rosario is right on him! Camacho was thoroughly beaten up in round five, but proved once more that he has the skills to back up his bravado, as he miraculously turned the contest on its head thereafter, gaining the favor of two of the three ringside judges. It was a close fight. I'll be the first one to admit it, but I was the most skillful fighter, and I proved it. Floyd Mayweather always enjoyed crushing the hopes and dreams of Mexican fans, and in 2013 he had a chance to take the O of their most lionized athlete in decades, Saul Canelo Alvarez. To adapt and adjust on the fly is second to none, and then he's going to have to be desperate. One two combination there by Mayweather connects to the right hand, and Canelo beginning to converse with Mayweather as he comes forward. Outside of the odd body attack, Canelo was well and truly undone, schooled as it's referred to in boxing terms. Nice right hand by Mayweather off the jab. 
Mayweather slipped, countered, and potshotted the Mexican with relative ease, and was even close to forcing a stoppage late on, although in the end, a dubious split decision was all he had to show for an excellent night's work. He's a, he's a strong competitor. He's a strong champion. It's nothing I never felt before after being in the sport over 20 years. Among genuine legends of the sport, the first bona fide speed versus power matchup took place in the late 40s between the ever elusive Willie Pep and his menacing rival Sandy Sadler. The two fought four times from 1948 to 1951, with Pep emerging victorious once and Sadler scoring knockouts in the other three. All of their battles were legendary street fights, as Sadler ignited a side of Pep that drove him to engage in a slugfest as opposed to his usual box-and-move approach. Sadler retired with over 100 knockouts to his name and today is widely considered the hardest-punching lower-weight fighter in history. One of the great unsung battles of Britain took place in October 1997, as the former long-reigning middleweight champion Chris Eubank took on the hottest ring prospect at 168 pounds, Joe Baldoni. Untried. Kazaki is a very fast starter. Ten first round. Oh, and a left hand. Puts Eubank. Eubank acknowledged Joe's feet with a grin and a smirk, which led to Calzaghe rubbing salt in the wounds by essentially out-showboating one of the finest showboaters that had ever blessed the British ring. The better of it, and he called Eubank several times. Oh, big left, and a right! Calzaghe has answered the questions here. Eubank pushed the young champ all the way, though the final decision was never in doubt. You could cut the tension with a knife as the two top heavyweight contenders, Donovan Razor Ruddock and Dynamite Michael Dokes, squared up in April 1990. Dokes had arguably the fastest hands among any heavyweight of his time and used his skills to unsettle Ruddock early on. Ruddick, who possessed the infamous smash punch, remained involved in the action, just biding his time to unleash his true power. Ruddick wasn't taking any chances with that finish, a brutal ending after an action-packed four rounds. What an impressive performance by Razor Ruddick! The interminable Alexander Usyk faced the murderous punching but slightly less tested Murat Gassiev in 2018 to unify the cruiserweight division and take home the prestigious Muhammad Ali Trophy as an award for the winning of the World Boxing Super Series. If anything that could be done to deter him, beautiful left hand and then a right uppercut in the opening round. As the fight wears on, beautiful oh, right hand. Right hand. Gassiev landed some thudding shots early, but Usyk's skill and desire to win resulted in a masterclass of which you'll rarely see in a fight with so much on the line. Best bar 15 and a half stone now, and the hand speed is, is, is tremendous. Quite comfortably, a top five boxing performance of the last decade. And try to do my best just today, Alexander Day. Being a man that carried impressive speed himself, Mike Tyson rarely shared the ring with a fighter that could beat him to the punch. That was until 1988, when the flabby Tony Tubbs came to flex what many fans in the know already Andy knew. Says they're all set, and there's the bell for round one. Well, here with Tubbs, the uppercut. I also know the uppercut of Mike Tyson. One punch after the bell. While Tubbs did pump out quicker punches, his flat-footed style played right into Tyson's hands, leading to an inevitable knockout within the first few minutes. Tell what about that punch hurt? Tubbs is hurt. Tubbs is hurt badly. It was a left hook. And it's over. My, my mission is to go and destroy and not to let anything get involved. You get punched, you get hurt. I refuse to be hurt, knocked down, and knocked out. I can't lose. I refuse to lose. Oscar De La Hoya's ever-growing audience was especially intrigued to see how their man would deal with an undefeated knockout merchant like Ike Bazooka Corte when they matched in February 1999. De La Hoya looks tense, a left-handed fighter. And it's so far in round number one. Right hand by De La Hoya. Well, we'll watch to see if Clancy talks to De La Hoya. De La Hoya lands a hard counter right. Stiff jail. 
The razor-thin slugfest saw both men score knockdowns in round six, where the fight continued at a frantic pace all the way until the unforgettable 12th and final round, when Oscar scored another knockdown and went all guns blazing for the finish. The heart shown from both men throughout, particularly here in the 12th, was incredible. Oscar got the decision, whereafter he briefly commented upon that furious exchange in the closing seconds. I mean, this guy's a very uh, good warrior. I mean, I give him all the credit in the world because I gave him some punches the last round that he wouldn't go down. Another fight, often overlooked for its magnitude, is Vladimir Klitschko's 24th World Heavyweight title defense against the brash rising contender Tyson Fury. He's trying to figure out exactly what he wants to do. Meaningful as it will the physical is. And imposing his imagination on Klitschko. Why is the fight overlooked? Well, it was lackluster in action, to put it mildly. Yet this was quite obviously Tyson Fury's game plan, to unsettle the champ with unorthodox movements and unpredictable striking patterns. Punches counted by oh, Big left hook by Fury. The odd decent punch landed, but Vladimir couldn't get things going as a whole, leading to one of the biggest upsets oh. in heavyweight history. The DQ, with, the DQ would be... It's hard to come to foreign countries and get this hit and it just means so much for me tonight to be here and get that decision. While Mike Tyson obliterated everything at heavyweight, a young man named Julian Jackson was putting his opponents away in an even more annihilating manner down at 160 pounds. Only now, it was time for the Virgin Islanders' biggest test in years, the Hall of Fame speed well, demon, terrible Terry Norris. about doing some work to the body early, but it's been upstairs so far. Brilliant hand speed, Norris. They're chopping right hand, and Terry Norris right here in the opening seconds has taken all the play away from the champion. I think Julian Jackson's having a lot of trouble with the speed. Norris beat Jackson around the ring, throwing every punch in the book from every angle at uncompromising speed. Terry Norris having a very strong showing here in the first round. Jackson stuck to his plan regardless, quietly stalking, waiting for Norris to make a mistake. Again, the incredible knockout ratio of Jackson. And then right in the end, Terry Norris is gone! He lost his concentration for one critical moment. Norris went on to become one of the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world, giving you an idea of how significant Jackson's stopping power really was. Able to catch with that kind oh, of definitely. Shot. When I went back in, the, in, in my corner, I knew he was right there for the shot. I just had to set it up. Due to substance abuse, Johnny Tapia's hiatus from the ring allowed for a fresh face, Danny Romero, to become the standout star in the new Mexican boxing scene. Tapia wants to lure Romero into a war. Phoenix energy ball between the counter inside as Romero comes at him. Romero trying to block that Tapia. Tapia took Romero's rise personally, goading his man with every clean punch landed, all in an attempt to win the crowd's favor. Remarkably effective in landing power punches. The fight itself was closely contested, with both guys giving their all for the win. Still, in the end, Tapia's extra bit of energy, eye-catching combos, and desire to become the people's champ once more became the deciding factor, winning the fight by unanimous decision. I refuse to go down, I refuse to lose, and whatever he hit me with, it was not going to hurt me. Muhammad Ali was seen as nothing but a lamb for slaughter when he faced the most intimidating and feared champion of all time, Charles Sonny Liston, in February 1964. Play on the move as we... Ali came out moving in the typical eloquent manner fans were familiar with during this time. But just to show that he wasn't there to play cat and mouse, he unleashed a vicious eight-punch combo that visibly shook Liston at the end of round one. And right hand, the best punch of the fight so far! Ali overcame what appeared to be temporary blindness due to an eye-burning solution placed upon Liston's gloves. Regardless of the foul play, a couple of rounds later at the end of the sixth, Liston retired in his corner after sustaining one of the most one-sided beatdowns in heavyweight championship history. He just couldn't handle the speed. I must be the greatest! I took up the world! I took up the world! Ali also won the rematch by a first-round knockout three months later. Before Oscar De La Hoya could proclaim the unofficial title of the biggest draw in boxing, he needed to overcome the immovable object that was Julio Cesar Chavez. Pounds. There's a cut, there's a cut already above the left eye of Julio Cesar Chavez. Chavez at this point now blood from the nose of Julio Cesar Chavez. An unfortunate cut left Joe Cortez no choice but to stop the fight. 
Oscar would have likely won regardless, but to the young man's credit, he gave Chavez a rematch two years later, where he went on to win a similar one-sided way. The thunder from down under, Costa Zoo, played his part in one of the most anticipated unification clashes of the early 2000s, squaring off with longtime reigning IBF junior welterweight champion, Super Zab Judah. knockouts on his slate, and there's the left uppercut, which was a peach from Judah. Zoo's struggling in the first round, another nice as the right hook up that time, Zoo in trouble once again through. Judah looked the far superior operator for the opening five or so minutes, limiting Zoo to desperate lunches. There in the second round, the right hand from Zoo was good, and another one! Flaws Judah! He's up very quickly, but his eyes are in orbit! It's over! Jane Aidy stopped it! A desperate lunge it may have been, but everyone could see the effect it had. Everyone except Judah, of course, as the day's champ protested to the ref while stumbling all over the ring. The boxing term Queer Street to its most drastic and comedic extent. But the fight finishes dramatically in the second round. As Floyd Mayweather approached the tail end of his career, he left no stones unturned by challenging Marcos Maidana, who brought an impressive 90% knockout ratio to the ring. At least he uses it. Left hook to the body, and now Maidana continues to go to work on the body and lands the overhead one. A busier, so landing more punches. Oh, good punch. Maidana displayed effective aggression early on, forcing Mayweather to the ropes as he unleashed numerous assaults to the body. Mayweather took some time, but eventually adapted his style to become the ring general, using Maidana's aggression against him while countering with powerful pot shots. Nice straight right counter by Mayweather. Mayweather did enough to win, but decided to give Maidana a rematch a few months later to put any lingering doubters to rest. Was this your toughest fight? Oh, he was a tough competitor. He had an awkward style. He was, he was a very, very good fighter. I take nothing away from Marcos Maidana. We saved the best for last, as Julio Cesar Chavez took on the undefeated and undisputed speed demon across all weight categories, Meldrick TNT Taylor. Taylor lands a vicious right hand. Taylor's boxing performance was quite honestly the best I've ever seen in the sport. Solid left hand by Meldrick Taylor. To back up and dominate the great Julio Cesar Chavez like this was seen as a near impossible task, expanded by the fact the onslaught never faded. All right out George Benton's game plan to perfection. Whoa, beautiful. Trading punches inside and Chavez again seems to wobble slightly as Taylor lands at will. Not to say Chavez didn't play his part, because Meldrick's face would say otherwise. Still, for 11 rounds and 165 seconds, we witnessed a masterclass, and HBO's unofficial judge, Harold Letterman, agreed as he had Taylor winning a complete shutout. And then, the Mexican legend did what only the truly greatest fighters with the most desire and heart have the capability of doing. If he gets up, he probably wins the fight. With only four seconds remaining, referee Richard Steele stopped the fight while Meldrick was on his feet. Was it the wrong decision? I think an argument can be made for both sides. One thing you can't deny is Chavez's legendary last-ditch effort was like something from a fairy tale, albeit one probably not suitable for kids, but you get my drift. Rocky Balboa, eat your heart out. Unsurprisingly, the speed trait came out on top. But to be fair, the term speed usually includes other factors such as footwork, defense, and in most cases, power as well, which is in contrast when singling out power punchers, where we often limit a fighter to the single ability of ending a fight with an individual blow. Either way, I had fun putting this together, and I don't think the subject matter of today's video truly matters when 20 or so fights here were among the very best in the sports archive. The thing was basically a trip down memory lane for hardcores of the sport, and an insight into the rich history for casual viewers. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and particularly the enhanced footage, as the time it took to complete all the editing was no small task. Until next time, this is BLTV Extra, signing off.